Hello, praise God. Let us begin the audience number 6 of Theology of the Body in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving Jesus, we thank and praise you for giving us one more opportunity to come around you to understand the mysteries which are stamped right there in our bodies when you created us male and female. O oh, Holy Spirit, thank you for enlightening us. Thank you for giving us the passion for theology of the body. Thank you for infilling in us with your wisdom. O Mother Mary, thank you in a special way for interceding for each one of us. Saint John Paul II, pray for us. Let us say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in this, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the last audience, audience number five, uh, St. John Paul II was explaining about the original solitude. The first original experience is original solitude. And we have seen original solitude has uh, two meanings. One derived from man's very nature, that is from his own humanity. and the other one is derived from the male female relationship and also we have seen the solitude shows that human being alone in the visible world as a person so the first human being begins to find an answer about who he is when naming the animals so in naming the animals man discovers his own identity as a person these are the main points we have covered in audience number 5 and today we are going to ponder over audience number 6 which was delivered by pope saint john paul ii on 24th october 1979 and the title we can say solitude and subjectivity and it is always see, all the audiences we can see it is always connected to the previous one and also we could see many of the concepts uh, st john paul the second is repeating and he is elaborating it going more deeper into these concepts in the following audiences uh, so here uh let's go into the first section of the audience number 6 the concept of original solitude includes both self consciousness and self determination so these are the two concepts which is going to be elaborated in this audience the self consciousness and self determination and though these uh, these were mentioned in the previous audience now st john paul the second is going much deeper into this concept st john paul the second is um, explaining the self consciousness and self determination the main uh, two concepts of the original solitude the result of the original solitude it is having an ontological structure so ontology is the study of being so man is a human being we are all human beings we find our identity in being than in doing so self consciousness and self awareness means i can think about myself i have a rich interiority so the the special nature which is given to us as human being as a person is i can think about myself i can think about others i can do things i enjoy a, my identity in being in being 
than in doing things so we have that capacity that interiority in us that richness in us so that is the main difference between a um, man and animal that is what adam the first man realized he is entirely different from the visible world and from other creatures then um, we are talking about uh, the consciousness and self awareness so the first part we see the consciousness and self awareness in audience number 5 it is also um, explained there the experience of his solitude brings forth man's capacity to experience consciousness it signifies man's subjectivity he is a subject he is able to do thing for himself which constitutes itself through the self knowledge man's self knowledge goes hand in hand with the knowledge of the visible world man experiences something of his own internal identity man's bodily activity makes him aware of his own consciousness as he carries out god's command man is aware of the meaning of his body in naming the animals he is aware of his fundamental difference from the animals he identifies them and name them on the basis of their bodies this is what we have seen the task is given to him in the previous audience while both man and animals have a body man's body reveals a truth to him he is not like the animals and only his body expresses a person a person a human person who can think about himself who can think about others he is different from the rest of the visible world adam experiences his existence in and through his body adam affirms himself in the visible world as a person so that is the result of the consciousness that is the result of the self awareness and self knowledge which is leading him to identify himself as a person and he is the only person he is the only person in the visible world section number 2 the narrative in the first chapter says that this man was created in the image of god st john paul ii is talking about um, the first account of creation and um, he is saying the first account of creation is narrating that man is created in the image of god in the second narrative he is manifested as a subject of the covenant that is a subject constituted as a person constituted in the dimension of partner of the absolute here st john paul ii is um, uh, talking about man as the partner of the absolute man is the only creature who has become the partner of the absolute he must consciously discern and choose between good and evil between life and death the words of the first order of god yahweh speak directly of the submission and dependence of man the creature on his creator they indirectly reveal precisely this level of humanity as subject of the covenant and partner of the absolute man is alone that means that he through his own humanity through what he is is constituted at the same time in a unique exclusive and unrepeatable relationship with god himself on its part the anthropological definition contained in the yahweh's text approaches what is expressed 
in the theological definition of man which we find in the first narrative of creation let us make man in our image after our likeness so precisely st john paul ii is telling here man is the only creature who is created with a covenant relationship with god with the creator so the covenant relationship which is irrevocable covenant relationship which is unconditional so that is the greatness of human being he is alone he is totally different he is alone in the visible world because he is created with a covenant relationship with the creator with god section number 3 man thus formed belongs to the visible world he is a body among bodies taking up again and in a way reconstructing the meaning of original solitude we apply it to the man in his totality his body through which he participates in the visible world makes him at the same time conscious of being alone otherwise he would not have been able to arrive at the conviction that he reached if his body had not helped him to understand it making the matter evident consciousness of solitude might have been shattered precisely because of his body itself the man adam might have reached the conclusion on the basis of the experience of his own body that he was substantially similar to other living beings animalia on the contrary as we read he did not arrive in this conclusion he reached the conviction that he was alone st john paul ii is telling even the experience of the body man could have been thinking the other way like his body has a lot of similarity with the bodies outside there the yahweh's text never speaks directly of the body even when it says that the lord god formed man of dust from the ground it speaks of man and not of his body and nevertheless the narrative taken as a whole offers us a sufficient basis to perceive this man created in the visible world precisely as a body among bodies so when we speak about a uh, man we can see only what is visible the body so um a later a later audiences uh, st john paul ii is um, talking about this very clearly the tragedy of today's world is uh, we are just considering the culture is just considering our body is just like any other living matter it is just physiology only it is only biology so that is the greatest tragedy of the modern culture so uh, here uh, st john paul ii is telling uh the first man adam he came to the conclusion no i i have similarities with the other bodies but i am alone a human person my body reveals as a human person so this is a um, very important for us to understand the very foundational concepts of theology of the body section number 4 at the beginning of the yahweh's text even before it speaks of the creation of man from the dust of the ground we read that there was no one to till the land or to make channels of water spring out of the earth to irrigate the whole land uh, we are talking about the yahweh's text um, genesis 2 we rightly associate this passage with the one in the first narrative in which god's command is expressed fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion genesis 128 
so here saint john paul ii is trying to connect the first account of creation and the second account of creation he is tying both together and and he is showing that they are complementary he is saying in the first account of creation god gave them the command fill the earth and subdue it and have dominion but at the same time we read in the second account of creation we read there was no one to till this has happened before the man was created from the dust of the ground so the first fundamental means to dominate the earth lies in man himself man can dominate the earth because he alone and no other of the living beings is capable of tilling and transforming it according to his own needs and um, this first outline of a specifically human activity seems to belong to the definition of man it can be affirmed that this outline is intrinsic to the meaning of the original solitude and belongs to that dimension of solitude which man from the beginning is in the visible world as a body among bodies and discovers the meaning of his own bodiliness so man discovers the meaning of his own his own bodiliness he is a body person man is a body person but at the same time he never stops only on the on the peripheral on the superfluous side of the body it goes beyond with a covenant relationship a partnership with the absolute i just wanted to sum up um, the audience number 6 uh, um, in fact i have explained in between also uh, we have seen the concept of the original solitude it includes both self consciousness and self determination we were talking about self consciousness and self determination so from the beginning man was created to be a partner of the absolute as a personal subject he was called to enter a covenant relationship with the god a relationship of eternal communion so a covenant relationship means which is everlasting even if man goes away from god the relationship is everlasting it stays it remains as subject of the covenant man's solitude means that he through his own humanity he is set into a unique exclusive and unrepeatable relationship with god so human being is created as unique exclusive and unrepeatable and he has a covenant relationship with god that is the foundation of his dignity we cannot understand who man is apart from his supreme call to enter into the covenant of love with his creator it is a gift given to man which reveals man's greatness so if we need to understand who we are if we need to understand who others are we need to understand the basic foundation for the dignity of human being that is he is created as a person in a covenant relationship of love with his creator now again uh, we can see this uh, explanation is extended to the uh, catechism of the catholic church um 27 paragraph 27 we see the desire for god is written in the human heart because man is created by god and for god and god never ceases to draw man to himself only in god he will find truth and happiness he never stops searching for it why we have all this desire unending thirst for love unending thirst for happiness because we are created for eternal communion we are created for eternal happiness we are created for eternal love 
the dignity of man rest above all on the fact that he is called to commune in with god the uh, catechism of the catholic church it is continuing in paragraph 27 saying this is the foundation of the dignity above all this is the foundation of the dignity of human person he is called in communion with god this invitation to converse with god is addressed to man as soon as he comes into being for if man exists it is because god has created him through love and through love continues to hold him in existence so we are existing we are we are created we are even today we are living we are existing because of his love he created us through love and he is holding us through his love man cannot live fully according to the truth unless he freely acknowledges that love and entrust himself to his creator the absolute partner this call to be partner of the absolute hinges on man's freedom his ability to determine his own actions so uh, the self determination it enables us to choose between life and death choose between good and evil so we can say that is the core of our you know, our personality our nature the ability to choose our own action what distinguishes man from the other bodies of the world it is this capacity so uh, when we think about god did not command the animals not to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil why because god's command presents a choice and only a person can make a choice not an animal so adam has the free will necessary to choose now human beings are the only creatures in the visible world that can disobey god an animal cannot commit sin and uh, we know that uh, there is no ethics there is no morality involved in an action of an animal so only human person can be a held responsible for his action because he is given the freedom to choose his own action love presupposes freedom in other words if god gives us human beings the choice of entering an eternal covenant with him an eternal communion with him we also have the choice of rejecting that covenant and that is what we call sin and when we are breaking the covenant relationship with god when we are saying no to god and that is when we are committing sin we are turning away from god and that is the tragedy of the modern world so with this i am concluding uh, audience number 6 here and uh, this video again it will be uploaded in the youtube channel babu john tob for life if you have any comments or questions on this uh, audience or any other audiences which we have covered so far please email me or text me and uh, if you have not yet subscribed to the youtube channel please consider subscribing it so that you will not miss any new uploads we will meet again in the next audience number 7 god bless you all 